Well, the major game they will play, by the way, uh, from a try-hard position, is um, is how can I explain this to you? Is to project onto the therapist uh, that the therapist does the work for them or does the thinking for them. Um, so when the therapist doesn't do the thinking for, for them or doesn't do the cognitive reasoning for them, they then will enact out and usually get quite ag aggressive internally. Yeah. Uh, and stay passive, by the way. Yeah, because you're doing not doing what you're supposed to do in this situation. Which is to work it out for them. Yeah. <laughs> We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to the next episode of The Therapy Show with myself, Jackie Jones, and the wonderful Mr. Bob Cook. Hi, thank you very much again. Yeah, we're going to carry on with the drivers. This is episode 62. Gosh, 62. We're really climbing up the charts, aren't we? We are. And we're I, going to be um... booking... Oh, go on. <laughs> no, that's fine. I was saying climbing up the charts. I was just thinking about... I was in the shops the other day and uh, I saw a whole... I don't know, a paper that came out when I was born in 1950. Wow. And it had the charts, the top 20 in the charts and... When you say, when I said I was going, we're going up the charts, I was thinking of that memory. But nothing to do with this podcast at all, but anyway. Nothing to do with this. We're going to try really hard in this one, Bob. Oh, gosh. Because oh, we're no, looking no, at the try hard driver. Prepare myself for, for this. this. This is one of you, I think the last podcast we did was on the uh, Be Perfect drive, and you talk about that maybe under stress that could be your default one. Try hard. Uh, used to be with me. Uh, and I've done a lot of therapy, so I, it's not my favourite corner as much as it used to be under stress. I, I do them all, Bob, depending on what mood I'm in. Try hard's one of mine, because I think that links into the be perfect. Okay, so we're going to do try hard. We uh, are. We can, let's start off with a little bit more about what you just said. That you think that the try hard driver links into the be perfect driver so if you could explain a little bit more what you mean by that because it takes a lot of effort to be perfect so i'm constantly trying hard with everything i do oh, another, no. another big giveaway is that i've got lines in the middle of my eyebrows as well that's a, a giveaway <laughs> for somebody with a try hard because we're constantly straining to try and do our best yeah yeah uh, that's absolutely true so they go together quite well don't they I think so. Yeah, they, they yeah. pop up quite regular for me. <laughs> so do you want to give a brief synopsis of driver behaviour then, Jenny, for people perhaps miss the last podcast and what, what we're doing? Yeah, driver behaviour is something that we kind of develop at, from a very young age with our parents. And, you know, it's it's the the antipathy, or is that the right word? I don't know, the opposite yeah. of yeah. the injunctions where we have, you know, don't be young, don't be you, don't be well, don't be ill, don't exist, all these don't things that we pick up non-verbally from our parents, our drivers kind of move us in the right direction so we get strokes, recognition and validation from our parents. So there's five driver behaviours, there's be perfect, try hard, please others, be strong and hurry up. Well done. Ta da! That perfectly. Do I pass? In your, Thank in you. Your, <laughs> Thank in you. Your own unique style, of course. <laughs> so yeah, the, I, I, we spoke a lot about the be perfect, but I just love the whole mechanics of the driver behaviour and how it links into our script and early decisions and everything else. I've spoken lots of times in this podcast. I'm very logical, and I just think it's it's a very it's a useful tool in the therapy room. Yes, to spot when people in their driver behaviours. And of course, if they are stuck in their driver behaviours, or if they, um, how can I explain this? If they're utilising them in a way that, that they don't actually get in touch with their real self, or lose contact in relationships, then they end up 
often coming to therapy. And actually, often when a person's not allowing themselves to be their self, they get anxious. They especially get anxious if they, um, like in your case, what you just said, they're trying hard to be, be perfect. It takes so much energy and often they fail. So they get yeah. even more anxious. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. And you, I, again, I know we touched on it in the last one, but you, you can generally see a client when they're in the try hard driver because the, the facial expression and the body language is, is trying really hard to work out maybe what you're saying. Sometimes I'm thinking of one particular client that I have. Th- there's a sense of confusion on their face sometimes if they don't get it. Mm-hmm. And you can see them really trying to understand or to, to get it right. Yeah, and often they move into or they attempt to move into what I call mind reading. Yeah. They try to guess or think or work out maybe what you're thinking so they can try hard to be fitting in to what you're thinking so they can get some recognition yes that makes perfect sense yeah the problem with that of course is that they lose contact with the person in front of them because they're not being their real self yeah. they're being a caricature of what they think the other person needs them to be yeah now of course in the you know, house of origin, where trying hard was stroked, then, you know, to not do that, they often feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Do do you point behaviours out to clients when they're in certain drivers? Is that something that you Uh, would do? That's an interesting one, isn't it? You see, depends on the type of TA therapist you are, because you can get TA therapists who do quite a lot of what i would call edu- educative therapy yeah so they they would teach ego states or they teach driver behavior or teach injunctions and that's very valid and very useful and there are some ta therapists who may not do any what we call educative um uh therapy at all um and then there's people ta therapists in the middle of that do some and then do some um i think the big thing to think about in all this is what you mentioned on the last podcast and that's the concept of shame yeah yeah so number one you need to i think know the people quite well i have to think about what does it mean when i start to share this material does it help or doesn't it help are they the sort of person might go away and obsess or attempt to do things perfectly or get lost in intellectualism rather than feeling and all these things but if you do decide to share it i think you also need to think about shame uh, because they may experience the sharing of the material as them doing something wrong yes yeah for example yeah Or, or various other things so they may feel um shamed in some way so i think the thing is to look out for when you are sharing information and i say i'll just repeat it the biggest is um the client starts to think or might think they've done something wrong or they may feel interrogated yeah so i i, I do i do do ed- educative therapy me so too I, yeah you share things like what you've just said um but I think about it, and I certainly think about it in terms of timing when I would share models of theory. I think about, well, are they the sort of client who might get lost in their head, and is it would it be useful? And I th- also think about shame. Yeah. I think for me, I, I do use the drivers an awful lot in the therapy room, but I use myself as an example. I'll point out when I'm in my different drivers. Yeah yeah do you do do you do it then jackie i i guess you share it and this is difference in style it's not right or wrong do you um how can i say this do you share the, the thinking on driver behaviors um with what's in mind so i suppose i'm simply saying why would you do it 
exactly what you were talking about earlier on, but it, I believe rightly or wrongly that there's no shame involved for the client when I'm using myself as an example. Right. Okay. And, oh, and why so would you do it though? Why, what's the end goal in sharing that theory? Want to reinforce the understanding of how it plays out in the room. Oh, okay. You know, and in the hopes that it's, it's going to help the client. Oh, oh. So you're really, whether it be driver theory, injunction theory, script theory, two things, what you're doing is helping them understand how they become the way they are. And from that process of more awareness, of psychological functions and psychological behaviors, they then can change uh, and integrate new ways of being in the world, which will be more beneficial for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think to have examples of these things in everyday life helps understanding that, you know, and that we all do it. There's nothing wrong in being in your driver behavior. It's something that we all do. You know, one of my sayings that I use a lot in the therapy room, I know this stuff. I'm a qualified psychotherapist, but I still go into my driver behavior. It's not it's not wrong. It's not bad. For me, it's all about awareness when we're in it. Yeah. Uh, and I am assuming, well, I'll just check out that you also spend a lot of time uh, on what people can do instead. Yes. To go towards healthy processes, I mean. Yes, yeah, definitely, yeah. But in order to to move away from it, we've got to know what it is when we're in it. Mm. And all this is done, you know, unconsciously. We don't consciously play out our driver behaviours. Mm. Mm. That's why, and, uh, and it's useful to hear that you do this. And, uh, and for the TA people out there or people who are just interested uh, 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 when we're talking, of course, all these therapists from different disciplines or clients. Um, Burn called, um, you know, um, drivers, injunctions as part of the script. And then he, he would encourage therapists particularly to do what he calls script analysis so they could understand um, the decisions they made about themselves and other people right at the beginning of life and how they may enact it out today in a way that doesn't help them. So on a training call, what we're training calls, drivers and junctions and script decisions would all be taught under the concept of script analysis. So, uh, so it may or may not be part of an ed educative therapy like Jackie does, which teaching people around their own scripts and helping them understand themselves better. And most importantly, how to change their scripts and put a new show, show on the road. So, there are some TA therapists who might not even mention all that lot, but they think it. The most important thing is they think it. Yeah. And their thinking determines the treatment plan. Yes. Yeah. And again, you know, I know we're talking about the try hard driver, but we touched on it with the, the one be perfect last time. Yeah. With personality traits and which one oh, yeah. the try hard leaks into. And the, the passive aggressive or playful resistor is what links into this driver behavior, which I think plays out interestingly in the therapy room. Oh, yes. I mean, so the driver burn called, you know, you know, try, trying, try hard. Um, Ian Stewart in the book that you brought up in the last podcast, I think it was Van Jones actually nicknamed this driver playful resistor which is what you're just talking about there. Yeah. Um, so it's the same driver, try hard, and the nickname is playful resistor. And it's often linked in with people who are, are, are quite passive or, or they're what we call inverted commas, passive aggressive. So it's a very inward process, but they actually don't actually get anything done. They try hard to do it or try hard to move away from their passivity, but they don't actually do it. Yeah. Which is really interesting because, you know, somebody that's in that, you know, ego state or that part of them will even use the words, I'll try and do it. Yeah. You know, the, the, those are the, the actual words that they use. I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll attempt it. Yeah. 
Yeah, these are the procrastinators. Yeah. Yeah. And taking action is uh, very uncomfortable for them. Yeah, even using the words, I'll do it, yeah. is very difficult for yeah. them. Well, the major game they will play, by the way, uh, from a try-hard position, is, um, is, how can I explain this to you, is to project onto the therapist uh, that the therapist does the work for them or does the thinking for them. Um, so when the therapist doesn't do the thinking for, for them or doesn't do the cognitive reasoning for them, they then will enact out and usually get quite ag aggressive internally. Yeah. Uh, and stay passive, by the way. Yeah, because you're doing not doing what you're supposed to do in this situation. Which is to work it out for them. Yeah, yeah. Solve all the problems for them. Which is interesting because... I think one of the things where, you know, if we're looking at driver behaviours as a way of getting recognition and validation and everything when we're younger, if we've got a try hard driver, in my mind, that means that we got recognition for the effort we put into things, not necessarily achieving an end result. Yeah, especially with a try hard. Yeah, so when we were constantly making it difficult so that we would get more recognition for trying really hard at something that might be quite a simple process, if that makes sense. <laughs> that makes complete sense. And as a therapist, what you experience often is a power struggle with the client who's caught up in that. Yeah. Because that's the struggle, if you like, is, is what, uh, how can I, is there power play for connection? Yes. Yeah. That's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. So it um, needs to be difficult. It needs to be really hard, yeah, even exactly. if it's a simple process. <coughs> yeah. Correct. And that's that's the process they enacted out with their parent, actually. And that's yeah. what I got the strokes for. Yeah. What's that phrase? Try hard and hard again until you succeed or something like that. Yeah. But I can't remember the parental slogan, but it's linked in. And there's a lot of... Uh, Is it if you about. if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again or something That's like it. that? Yeah. That's the parental slogan, which yeah. the, the client with this sort of system will um, accept as adult reality. Yeah. And you can see it playing out in the therapy room a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah. Everything is, you know, it's making a mountain out of a molehill, literally. <laughs> yeah. From the moment they walk into the door. I recognise it so well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they don't complete anything. They, they end up in struggling. Yeah. They don't take action. They struggle and procrastinate. Um, and they really, really do move into struggling in an attempt to get to the therapist or the other person to d do the thinking for them. Yeah. And simple things. I can, I can think of a few clients where, you know, if I ask them, where would you like to sit this week? That would <laughs> throw them into turmoil. It was, you know, whereas if I just sat in my usual chair and left them to sit in there, that they'd be all right with that. But if I asked them, where would you like to sit? Even that, the question, what would you like to talk about? Mm, that's right. And they'll usually pick people in relationships who, who will actually do things for them yeah. or do the thinking for them. Yeah. Or, and when that doesn't work, they end up in a struggle with them. And this in, in life, and they often come to therapy because of this, communication then breaks down. Yeah. Is it, is it when you started saying that then, the, the, the words that was going through, through my head was um, kind of a, a, a sense of hope, hopelessness? Yes. Hopelessness and helplessness. Yeah, and, and kind of that they've done. A, I used to call it learnt helplessness, where they yeah. they right. learnt to be helpless, so that the other uh -huh. would then come in and do the thinking yeah. or the doing. Uh, yeah. That's a very good word, and they pick the type of person who's got a parent ego state that buys into that. Yeah, that defines them, that tells them what to do, that does the thinking for them. Yeah. And of course, what happens then is the other person on the side of that resents all that in the end and starts struggling with them. And there's no separation or individuation. They get caught up in the struggle. Yeah. 
It's, 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 relationships are nightmares, Bob. Why do any of them? <laughs> because we, the more we talk about the driver behaviours over the next few weeks, you know, this is something that maybe I should have thought about before I actually say it out loud. But do some drivers attract other types of drivers? Yes, absolutely. And they, yeah. you know, our partners, we pick them yeah. because well, they complement our drivers. Just think, yeah, but just think of the obsessive compulsive person who things have to be right or they're wrong. Yeah. So in between, they're black or they're white. Just, you know, um, I, pick, I know in the last podcast we, we picked on obsessive and compulsive again. But um, then, of course, the passive, uh, sorry, the try hard person who exhibits try harding as a way to survive, put those two together. Yeah. You've got an interesting combination, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Because you're going to then have the parent who actually is black and white, and and usually obsessive compulsive people uh, do define themselves, and then therefore they heavily define the other person. And those two often go together, I think, the try hard and the, uh, the obsessive compulsive uh, person who usually has drivers around being perfect. So yeah. the other person tries hard to be perfect for the parent on the other side who has to have the other person being perfect. Yeah, and th th that's just a wonderful eye-opener for how we are as human beings and how we interact with other people. And, you know, do we unwittingly pick certain friends or, you know, partners Wow, wow, out wow. our script well, along with all this yeah that's it that's exactly what happens so people who come to you for therapy are usually enacting out the games and patterns and drivers from the past that they learned to do to survive in their family system yeah so when they grow up individuate move away move into the same relationships, they usually, and this is where I agree with Freud, and there's not much I really agree with Freud, but I do agree with this bit. Freud used to say, we, we, we marry our parents. Wow, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, what he was really saying is, we choose people with interlocking scripts and yeah. people who we know how to be with. Yes, yeah, that makes and sense. Makes it's familiar. Point. Yeah. yeah, it's familiar, it's predictable, yeah. you know how to be, the world makes sense, and we're all on the same plane. Yeah. So we pick people. Now, on one level, that's okay, because we have all the psychological positivities you just talked about there. And on another level, it can often lead to disaster. Yes. I would imagine quite a lot of the time it leads to disaster because familiarity breeds contempt, so they say. <laughs> it's not always the best place to be. Well, I, I, you know, when people come on to, when people came onto my training program and still do, even though I'm not the trainer to them, I often use, or when they come into therapy, I often, it's more training, I think. I often used to say, you know what? You're going to be a different person when you leave here in four years' time because you've got to do a lot of your own therapy. Oh. And then you may choose to be around people with different scripts and different ways of being. Yeah. And, and often your partnerships might split up, but they, if they love you enough, they'll stay with you while you change. Yeah. Or the relationship changes. But yeah. what happens is as people, if they just carry on the same scripts or the same people, they actually, it might work out and, also, as they start to change and meet different people and have different communications, um, things may go wrong. I think that's really... And the other yeah. person doesn't come to therapy, then we're in into an interesting area. Yeah, I think that's really interesting because one of the things I say a lot in the therapy room, you know, if they're saying that they want to change the partner or they want to change the husband or whatever it is, and I'll say, we can't change anybody. The only person we can change is ourselves. But if we make certain changes, our behaviour will change towards that person. Mm. So mm. It, it kind of, by osmosis sometimes, mm. change occurs in the relationship, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think our driver behaviour, you said this 
I think of the last podcast, but I want to repeat it. As we start to do the therapy, as we start to change, as we start to take ownership of ourselves, by definition, we'll have to face the parents in therapy, as I said before. Yeah. So we start to do all this, but um, then our reliance on one particular driver may not be so exaggerated. In other words, we may pick other ways of being. Yes, yeah. And that's that's the point of therapy, isn't it? Is is looking whether what we're doing is working for us now, and if it's not, being able to change it and do something that is working for us. That's right. And uh, uh, I think with all these drivers, it's very useful to be able to spot the therapist anyway. Spot when a person's uh, moving into driver behaviour because it means they're going away from contact from the other person as well as going away from contact with themselves internally yeah yeah so what what would we be seeing in the the try hard then with, with the, the words the book would, in front of you. I, I know that's what i'm doing <laughs> the words that the the use would be that i'll try to do it and yeah. you know i'll attempt it so the the words that they'd be using it says here the tone the person will sometimes tense up the throat muscles so that the voice sounds muffled or strangled yeah which is interesting um gestures often one hand is placed beside the eye or behind one ear as if they're straining to hear something and trying hard yeah and that the fists are sometimes clenched yeah in that passive way yeah um Postures with try hard as with please others. The person often strains forward. Hands might be on the knees. General impression is of a hunched up pose. And all those behaviours will show that they've moved ego state. In other yeah. words, they've moved to a different part of themselves. In other words, they've moved to their younger self where they're enacting out their script. Yeah. And you can see that happening in the therapy room. Oh, oh. And they will, as I said earlier, in the podcast, <coughs> and we can call it transference if you want, they will attempt to make you into the parent they have in their heads. Yeah. So, so life's predictable. Yes, yeah. They have a sense yeah. of identity. Yeah. Now, what's really important is the therapist has an understanding of what's going on. So by uh, being a driver detective, you like. You, Love you, that. You, yeah, you're... <laughs> Can hypothesize on their younger self, and then you can you can uh, really shape the therapy from there. You can be, if you want to move into the transference, you could act that parent out. If you want to stay out of the transference, you could explain it from an educative way. Either way, you, what you're aiming for is to help the person understand themselves better, so they've got more awareness, so they can put a new life plan or script on the road. Yeah. And don't have such reliance, and therefore they won't have such reliance on one particular driver. Yeah. I, I yeah, again, I know I said it in the last one, but I do I do love how we dip in and dip out of these five drivers that we all have access to each and every one of them, but we do tend to have a few that we use. But to physically see somebody going into driver behavior i can i can distinctly remember the first time when i was aware of that as a trainee psychotherapist and yeah. i i don't think we pay attention to people's body language that often in normal everyday life no because well we don't because a we haven't been taught b there's no purpose for it really but um certainly if you're thinking from a psychological way or a psychotherapeutic way, the behavior manifests the internal process. So what's yeah. happening behaviorally you know, is a manf manifestation of what's happening internally. Yeah. So by looking at behaviors, you can actually then inquire about the internal world and they two will link together. Yeah. And they'll think you are a mind reader. <laughs> Uh, well, certainly with try hard, yes, <laughs> try hard. They want, they expect you to be a mind reader. Yeah, yeah. And they will try hard to work out what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and then they'll they'll go into a struggle against that 
that's the point they yeah. won't go into adapting like a pleasing person like we're going to go on to later what they'll do is to start struggling against that and they usually go into competition about whose reality is correct yeah but they don't it's actually... the aggressive part or the resistor yeah. part in yeah. the Playful that's why you call it playful resistance, yeah. I think. But now, the best way to work with people who move into that whole process, we just talked about struggle, and procrastination and trying hard and never actually, is actually to come from your own child, ego state yourself in terms of fun and humour. Humour is a great one because you bypass the parent, yeah. with those sorts of transactions, as long as the person on the other side doesn't experience you taking fun at them or something yeah uh, but but it's a good way to bypass that parent and that whole struggle yeah to get to the child i mean definitely because as you said in the last one the the, the parent is gonna pop up they're gonna mm. come out and be in the room as well mm. yeah so if we can bypass the parent to engage in their child perhaps by humor then that's a good way to work with these types of characters i think yeah um it's interesting driver theory when we talk about them okay so brilliant so what we're going to be looking at next time is well, let's do the next three yeah in the, do the in next the, three the next two podcasts we can do the next three i think okay which are going to be uh what are they please me pleasing others please, please and others hurry up and be strong, be strong. yeah we Again, three that. of my favourite ones. <laughs> we can do that in the next two podcasts. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, it's really important to say these are defence systems. Yes. This is how we got by. This is why you can say they're my favourite ones, because there's the, this is how we got by, this is how we survived, this is how we pleased the parents, and this is often brings us great success uh, today, and often it may be the source of the problems. Yes. 100% yeah, so, the source of the problems, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's best to look at, we we don't just go in and say, oh, stop being perfect or something. We need to understand the process and how it helps the person defend against the uh, critical parent or the injunctions or however we want to talk about it so they can start understanding themselves to put a new script on the road. And yeah, all the things I've said in the last two podcasts. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Bob. So I will Looking see you in the next forward to the next ones where we can finish the other three off and talk about them. Uh, and I'm going to try and link them as well to personal adaptations and different types of personality profiles. Um, it's really interesting. I like talking about these drivers because I don't often have the opportunity to talk about them. So I love it. Thank you for that. I love talking to you about anything, Bob. Oh, so, so such kind <laughs> words. <laughs> my please others just in case you didn't know oh that's all right I, I, in fact, <laughs> when clients move in there please other drivers i i can sit back in the luxuriousness as they make me a cup of tea or they ask me how i am and all that sort of stuff so but that would be stepping into the transoms i suppose but uh <laughs> thanks for letting me talk about them clinically anyway uh, anytime anytime so i shall see you on the next episode bob yeah you take care then take care bye 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 you've been listening to the therapy show behind closed doors podcast we hope you enjoyed the show don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review we'll be back next week with another episode <laughs>